In our Sunday school lesson last week, we took a look at the Epistle to the Hebrews, where the writer of the Epistle to the Hebrews, he spoke to his people with the desire that they would stop neglecting the Word of God, that they would stop neglecting His only begotten Son, that they would stop neglecting the promise of Christ, the promise of salvation. And so he spoke to the people about the angels, and he compared the angels, what they do, their service, to all of what Christ has done for us. And he showed that Christ, he is greater than the angels. He's greater than anything that you or I, what we may give our worship and what we may give our praise to. And again, he showed that we should stop worshiping and we should stop praising things that aren't worth, they aren't worthy of our worship. They aren't worthy of our praise. And so the writer showed that Christ, he is worthy. He has done so much for us. He has given so much to us. He has given us everlasting life. And so he showed that Christ, he's the one that we should be worshiping. He is the one that we should praise. He's the one that we should be appreciating. And so we were left with the same question that we have been left with all quarter long. Will you believe in Christ? Do you believe in Christ? And then the lesson also added on another question. If you do not appreciate Christ, if you do not believe in Christ, if you do not worship, if you do not praise Christ, why not? And so here today in our Sunday School lesson from the fifth chapter of the book of Revelation, we take a look at a future picture. We take a look at the kingdom of heaven and we'll see the throne room of the Lord. And one is going to be moving in this throne room who we'll again see today. He is worthy of our worship. He is worthy of our praise. So our Sunday School lesson this week, it opens up there in the sixth verse where we are again in the throne room of the Lord. And we'll see there in the throne room of the Lord that there were four living creatures. We're told that there were elders. And again, moving in the midst of the throne room, we are told is the lamb. We are told there that the lamb, he appeared to have been slain and has seven horns. He has seven eyes, which we are told represent the seven spirits of God, God in his fullness. So again, what does all of this speak to? We have four living creatures. We have elders who are present in this future picture of the kingdom of heaven. Well, when we're taking a look at the lamb and we're talking about the lamb being slain there, it's hard for us to, to ignore the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, where in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, in the fifth and the seventh verse there, we'll see that there was a prophecy of a suffering servant. That prophecy is spoke of Christ. And we're told there that Christ, the suffering servant, would be wounded, that he would be chastised for our peace and that he would be led as a lamb to the slaughter. As for the four living creatures and the elders, let's take a trip through some scripture here. We're gonna do some cross referencing Now, we'll see in the fourth chapter of the book of Revelation and the eighth verse that the four living creatures, that they all have six wings, that they are all full of eyes around and within. They do not rest day or night as all they do is sing praises to the Lord. We find a very similar description to this to these four living creatures over in the book of Isaiah, where in the sixth chapter of Isaiah, in the second and the third verse, we'll see the seraphim who are a set of angels that stand around God's throne. And we'll see that they have a very similar description. And all they do is worship and sing praises to the Lord. Now, when we go back over to the book of Revelation and we take a look at the eighth verse there about the elders, we'll see that the elders, that they were actually numbered to the number of 24. There were 24 elders we'll see there. And we aren't exactly told who these elders are, but we are left with some hints, as we'll see here in scripture. If we go back over to the fourth chapter of Revelation and we take a look at the fourth verse there, we're told that the 24 elders, that they all have their own thrones, that they are clothed in white robes. Good hint there. And we're also told that they wear crowns of gold on their heads as well. And so we'll see when we take a look back at our lesson there in the seventh verse, we're told that when the lamb, that is Christ, when he took the scroll from the right hand of him who was on the throne, that is the father who was sitting on the throne, 
we're told that the four living creatures and the 24 elders, that they fell down before the lamb. They fell down before Christ, him, with their harps. They had golden bowls of incense, which were the prayers of the saints, we are told there. So this hints at the 24 elders possibly, quite possibly, being the raptured church. That is the raptured church of God. That is all of the saints, all of us who believe today, all of those who are of the church age being representatives here by these 24 elders. And we have scripture that backs up this notion because again, we saw what, what the 24 elders, what they were wearing. They had their garments, they had their golden crowns. And so scripture, it backs up this thought. For example, if you turn over to the 61st chapter of Isaiah and you take a look at the 10th verse, we will see there that one day we are going to receive garments of salvation and we're going to wear a robe of righteousness. As Paul and James, they said, we will receive as a reward an imperishable crown, that is the crown of life for enduring through life by our faith. Now, as we continue here, we are going to see the four living creatures. We're going to see the elders. We're going to see that they sing a new song, which again, it further hints at the 24 elders quite possibly being us. It is quite possible that we are seeing another future picture of ourselves in the kingdom of heaven and what it is that we will be doing in the kingdom of heaven. So let's take a look at this and I hope that you enjoy this. I hope it excites you as much as it excites me. So we'll see there in the ninth verse that the four living creatures, the 24 elders that they sing out, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. So notice that they said redeemed us, us. Now the seraphim, yes, they are singing, they are singing these praises, but the 24 elders, they are redeemed, we're told there, which again, I, I certainly believe that this further hints at the fact that the 24 elders that they are representatives of us. In fact, they are us. We are taking a look at, at our future selves, worshiping in the kingdom of heaven, praising God in the kingdom of heaven, saying that you are worthy to take the scroll in the kingdom of heaven in that future day. We'll see there in the 10th verse that, that we continue to sing. They continue to sing there. And you have made us kings and priests to our God and, and we shall reign on the earth. Now, if you recall something that I have shared with you several times over in the book of Exodus, it was said to the children of Israel. In fact, it was promised to the children of Israel if they were to keep God's covenant, if they were to be obedient to the law, that they would become a holy people, that they would become a kingdom of priests. Now, we know that they were unable to fulfill the law. In fact, we know that nobody is able to fulfill the law. The only one that could fulfill the law is Christ. But Christ has said to us that if we believe and if we have faith in him, if we follow him, then we ourselves will be able to fulfill the law. And again, the promise of the law is a people that will become a holy people, a people that will become a kingdom of priests. And again, take a look at this new song that the four living creatures and that the 24 elders are singing there. Take a look at what we just said there, what we just saw in scripture, what they just sung there about being priests. Now, when we take a look at the 11th verse there, We'll see that John, the one who was receiving this revelation from Christ, we'll see that he shares with us that he then heard the voice of many angels around the throne join in with the four living creatures, join in with the elders. And, and John, he said there that there were so many, he could not put a number. He tried to, but he could not put a number on the multitudes that was in the kingdom of heaven that began to sing, that began to rejoice, and that began to praise the Lord. John, he said that they sung, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And so again, as I said last week, if we see where the angels, God's angels are falling down and worshiping the Lamb of God, they're worshiping His only begotten Son, they are worshiping Christ, if they will worship him, certainly, certainly we should be worshiping Christ. 
Certainly we should be worshiping the lamb. Certainly we should be worshiping God. We should be doing that today because again, he is worthy because of all that he has done for us. He was slain for us. He became our propitiation so that we can one day fulfill what was shown here in our scripture today. So that one day we can be in the kingdom of heaven. We should be worshiping him today. Now, when we take a look there at the 13th verse, we are told there that every creature in heaven on earth and under John heard saying blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. And I tell you, Christ, he is, he's worthy of our worship. He is worthy of our praise. Look at this rejoicing. Look at this, this picture of the kingdom of heaven, the great joy for Christ. We see him moving to the position of authority where he is taking the scrolls here from the father. Christ, he is moving to fulfill his eternal role. And it is filling us in this future picture. It is filling up the kingdom of heaven with great joy because again, we see the promise being fulfilled once again. God, he is one who is always going to keep what it is that he has promised. And it is promised that, that Christ, that he will have a everlasting throne. That was the Davidic covenant. That's something that I shared. I did a Bible study series about God's unbreakable, his everlasting covenant, his everlasting promise. If you, if you missed that, certainly go back. And so we today, we look forward to the day that we're seeing here in our Sunday school lesson. We look forward to that day with great hope in our heart and that hope it is going to be fulfilled. And we are going to again be worshiping. We're again going to be praising the Lord. We're told there in the 14th verse that the four living creatures, they said, as Christ again is moving to take those scrolls, they said, amen. And as he took his place, the elders, they fell down and they continue to worship and will continue to worship and continue to sing praises forever and ever. So how does this, how does this picture, this revelation, how does it make you feel? For me, it fills me up with great joy. It's such a, a beautiful picture where again, we see ourselves in the kingdom of heaven, just like we will see over in the 21st chapter of the book of Revelation and throughout the book of Revelation. All of us, we should want to have part in this picture, right? All of us, we should want to have part in the kingdom of heaven. But the only way that you and I can have part in fulfilling that picture, the only way that you and I can be in the kingdom of heaven is if we find the lamb worthy. We have to find the lamb worthy. We have to, to believe in him. We have to trust that he has washed away, that he has purged away all of our sins and we must lean on Christ. We must depend on him. We must put him first in our life. If we aren't putting him first in our life, we are saying that he is not worthy of being put first in our life. We find that he is not worthy. And so that new song that will be sung one day, we won't be singing it because we never found him worthy today. So again, if you want to fulfill that picture, if you want to be in the kingdom of heaven, you must find the lamb worthy today. You must appreciate the Lord today. You must thank the Lord today for all that he has done for, for you, for all of us. And again, hopefully in that appreciation, you are moved to give him your praise. You are moved to worship him because again, he's done so much for us and again, he is worthy of our praise. So again, we are left with the question, will you believe? Do you believe in Christ? And if you do not believe in Christ, why not? Do you want to have an everlasting home in the kingdom of heaven? A new question for us to answer. And again, I hope that you do desire to have an everlasting home in the kingdom of heaven where there's going to be great joy, where all we are going to do is rejoice worship and praise and have a, a wonderful time. And I, again, I certainly hope that you want to have part in that wonderful time.
Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Be sure that you like this video and if you aren't doing so already, make sure that you're following this channel. Hit the alert bell as well so that you don't miss any notifications for the next video that we share here on the Newfound Faith YouTube channel.